Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video here to talk some Dragon's Dogma 2 as Capcom will be rolling out some updates for that game here shortly. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have been talking about the game. I'm sure some of you guys have picked the game up even with the poor reception for the game. I mean, generally poor reception. Let's be honest. When the game is sitting at, what is it now? I know it was mostly negative for a bit. It's at a mixed reception. It is slowly going up. 35,000 reviews, 52% positive. Obviously, this is a far cry from some of the recent Capcom releases, such as a Resident Evil 4, even a Street Fighter 6, but, um, I think most people agree that fundamentally, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a good game. There's a worthwhile game there. There's elements of the game that are very head-scratching. Obviously, the microtransactions, obviously, the PC performance, and obviously, some of the missing elements, like the ability to start a new game not being there is very, very weird, but... Uh, there are updates being rolled out for the game. So the official Dragon's Dogma Twitter account put out a tweet to all Dragon's Dogma 2 players. We're planning to release patches including the following updates and fixes in the near future and we'll release them as soon as they are ready for distribution on each platform. Thank you for your patience and support. Update for all platforms coming PS5, Xbox Series X and S and Steam. Adding the option to start a new game when save data already exists. Please. It is the year 2024. Why is that not available? How did that, like, just miss the cracks as far as, uh, you know, being called out ahead of release? That is very, very strange. Changing the number of Art of Metamorphosis items available at pawn guilds in the game to 99, making the quest that allows players to acquire their own dwelling where they can save and rest. Available earlier in the game, miscellaneous text display fixes, miscellaneous bug fixes... There are some updates that are console-specific, adding the option to switch motion blur on and off in options, adding the option to switch ray tracing on and off in options. Fantastic! Adding the option to set frame rate to either variable or max 30 FPS in options. The thing is, some people like an uncapped frame rate. Other people prefer a consistent frame rate. A consistent frame rate will add a more consistent experience. I know, a little bit of a redundancy there. But, uh, you know, some people don't like it going from 45 to 35 to 55 frames per second and fluctuating all the time. I'd rather have the fluctuation rather than a lock 30 FPS. I just think 30 FPS in this day and age it's playable i'm not gonna go and say that it's unplayable i think that's a little bit too much like sometimes i feel like i was a little bit crazy in saying 30 fps was unplayable is it ideal not for me personally but also personally i've been playing final fantasy 7 rebirth and that game has a performance mode where uh you can play it in 60 fps but that performance mode is a literal atrocity like an abomination and maybe that's a little bit of hyperbole in regards to ff7 rebirth's performance mode but it is so bad in my opinion and a lot of people hearken to final fantasy 16's performance mode and said that that was really bad and um I'm playing FF7 Rebirth in a graphics mode, and I'm like, yo, the visual upgrade, I'll, I'll, I'll drop it to 30 FPS. Like, I'm totally okay with playing that game at 30 FPS, but, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to the consoles, you're talking about $400 boxes, and modern games, every single one of them running at 60 FPS... Uh, might be a little bit of a stretch, like, to be perfectly honest. Is Dogma 2, like, a visual masterclass? I wouldn't say that. Is it a good-looking game? Yeah, it's a good-looking game, but, you know, your uh, your opinion will vary on whether or not they should have a locked 60 FPS mode. Updates for Steam include improving quality when DLSS super resolution is enabled and fixing an issue where models appear low quality under some specific settings. Again, I think from a fundamental standpoint, as far as the gameplay, world design, stuff like that is concerned, Dragon's Dogma 2, there's definitely a good game in there. And I definitely think, you know, the Metacritic score, I believe, is like an 87. I feel like that score is well warranted. And if this is the style of game that you are going into, do I have some issues here and there as some... Uh, uh, as far as some QOL, uh, QOL issues, as far as quality of life and things like that, some modernization that I would have liked, sure, but for the most part, the game is really good, it's just stuff like the egregious monetization, and I get it that a lot of you guys are of the opinion, and I can see where you're coming from in the sense that, yo, this monetization stuff, you don't even have to look at it, the, what they are doing, and I feel like this is what Capcom is doing with the monetization, this is what a lot of these companies are gonna do in terms of monetizing $70 single-player games, 
is that they're just trying to get money from the whales. There are people that have endless amount uh, amounts of disposable income, and literally, I, I bring up one of my boys often, and love the dude, I constantly call him out. He has an absurd amount of disposable income, and he buys nonsense like the Assassin's Creed microtransactions, and I'm like, well, when I see that unfold in front of my eyes, I'm, it becomes very clear to me why these companies do that. It's to get money out of these people that either have an unhealthy obsession with the game, that they're spending money on like XP boosts and time savers, money that they don't have, or it's the case of they're just drawing more money from the people with absurd disposable income. I don't advocate for that because I think... Ultimately, if they realize that this is an avenue for them to generate a lot of revenue, that can alter their game design as well. They will make it a game in a way that they will incentivize you more and more to take advantage of those time savers. It's a fine line you have to walk if you want to monetize a game to get money from the whales and then also keep it totally the same. And I feel like with a lot of developers, it could be a tricky area uh, to go through in terms of keeping the game great for the people that don't want to buy stuff while also uh, getting money from the whales, so to speak, as you call them. Like, again, I don't want to refer to these people as whales, but that seems to be the term that people anoint these individuals that do spend a lot of money. And uh, again, I call my boy out all the time in these videos. He literally watches these videos, and every time he, I, I say something about him, he ends up just uh, text messaging me, calling me poor. So, like, yo, he'll, he'll attack me in private as well. He doesn't have an online platform to attack me, but nonetheless, again, when I see that stuff happen uh, in front of me, uh, this dude's also a big Destiny 2 player, and like whenever a Destiny 2 patch drops, the amount of money he drops on like these cosmetics, I'm like, bro, you are crazy. In the case of Destiny 2, it is a free-to-play game. The expansions cost money, but you get the idea. Monetization, when it comes to $70 titles, I get why people are going to defend it. Just let the whales spend money. Let them make more money off the whales. Games are getting more expensive to develop, so on and so forth. I just think it is a murky area and territory that we do not want to get to when we talk about time savers. In the past, cheat codes were in games, guys. Cheat codes were time savers. Now they're monetizing said cheat codes, in, uh, essentially. And uh, some people are saying, get good, get good at the game. You can get all these items just playing the game. Yo, I get that. I get all of that. It's just territory, I'm telling you guys, you don't want to normalize because once you give some of these publishers an inch, oh, you are damn right that they're going to try to take a mile. So just keep that in mind when you guys are uh, defending microtransactions and whatnot. Uh, it can spiral into nonsense, let's just say. But that'll do it for me. Again, I know a lot of you guys are enjoying the game, as am I. I think the game is really good. Um, and I should say that over and over again because I was a little bit down on the game, but the game is really good, and I think most of you guys, outside of, like, performance issues and whatnot, are gonna find a good game here, and if what you wanted was Dragon's Dogma 1 Expanded, better visuals, I think you're gonna enjoy the game. It's just there's certain elements that, uh, do push me a little bit away in terms of fully enjoying the game. But that'll do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always, sound off there. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey, what's going on guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.